you know, let's talk about the current scams that you're seeing in the Memphis area. What what's out there? You know, we talked earlier before about uh, robocalls. So many of the scams uh, are peddled via robocalls. So frustrating. The, so um, frustrating. The one that actually we put out some alerts out recently, there's just a spate of them. The Federal Communications Commission put out an alert. The Federal Trade Commission put out an alert. Uh, is something that we, we call, uh, everybody calls a one ring call. I've gotten them from Nigeria. <clears throat> Nigeria, Sierra Leone, Mauritania, I forget some <laughs> of the other countries. But it's an interesting scam in that they're trying to get you to call them back. And, and most people don't, but the phone will ring once or twice. And people look at their caller ID and, and, and the curious, that's they count on a certain percentage of people being curious, calling it back. It looks like it's probably a U.S. number, may even be an 809, I think 809 is the Dominican Republic. Maybe some people think, well, that's an 800 number, toll free. Mm. In fact, when you call these numbers, uh, it's a toll call, you're hit with a charge immediately, and then they do everything they keep can to keep you on the line talking about whatever they're talking about because the charges are accruing and the charge will end up showing up on your phone bill. There's ways that they can get them on the phone bills uh, and you end up paying a pretty heavy toll. But does that toll go to the scammers? How do the scammers make the money? The, um, the answer is yes. Uh, the phone companies are required to provide basically billing services for certain third parties. Uh, I assume they vet some of them, but I think some <laughs> of them they, they don't. don't. And uh, uh, the answer is no. When the, call, the, the charge gets on your phone bill, I think the phone companies may get a cut, but most of the income uh, goes to the scammers. For years, probably the number one scam reported to the Better Business Bureau, to uh, the Federal Trade Commission, other law enforcement agencies, were uh, crooks calling, impersonating the I IRS mm -hmm. and saying to people, you didn't pay your taxes or something else. And uh, if you don't pay immediately and pay by, they want you to pay by some funky means like wiring the money or a gift card, gift cards, uh, yes. we're coming, coming to arrest you. The good news is a few years ago, uh, <clears throat> the um, international authorities, including in India, busted like 15 call centers in India where most of those calls originated from and the number of calls dropped precipitously. Uh, they started to pick back up but what we're now seeing is people calling saying they're from Social Security, not the IRS, Social mm. Security and saying for some reason your Social Security benefits are in jeopardy or if you provide us some confidential personal information uh, your, your benefits will go up and people provided then uh, they said they're subject to identity theft. Well, let's, let's make one thing clear since you're talking about the IRS and Social Security. They're not going to call you out of the blue, correct? They're, in very rare cases, generally only when you've called them for some reason, and uh, they're certainly, the IRS in particular is not going to call you and first time you hear it, you're about to be arrested. Yes. You're going to get letters, you're going to get notices, uh, and, and the real red flag, you know, it's always interesting, disheartening, is you would like people to understand they're not going to do that, but you know, if they get past that defense, then when they say, now, the way you need to pay this fine or this fee or whatever is through an iTunes gift card or yeah. an Apple gift card, you'd kind of like people to stop and think, why does the IRS or Social Security <laughs> want me to pay something using that? But the crooks just rely on people's kind of emotions outstripping their common sense. Uh, one you told me about was involving bogus products. You mentioned dietary supplements. Yeah. So tell me about that. The Federal Trade Commission uh, is, is very active in busting companies that peddle what are mostly dietary products with outrageous, unsubstantiated claims about their ability to treat, in many cases, serious diseases. Most recent one, just, just in the past uh, month or so, they busted um, tw uh, a company peddling a product called Jenny, uh, Jenny Ux, G-E-N-I-U-X, uh, Jenny Ux, that they claimed would improve cognitive functioning. Uh, uh, and, and the FTC, these are the allegations the FTC landed. They said, uh, first of all, it, it doesn't do what they say they, it, it does. They were creating fake news websites, making it look like these products were being 
analyzed and reported on news websites, which would add an air of legitimacy. They had phony consumer testimonials. They claimed that people like Bill Gates, Stephen Hawking, now deceased, but <laughs> Bill Gates and Stephen Hawking used it, two obviously brilliant guys. Uh, and uh, they had bogus uh, free trial offers and some of the claims, they referred to Jenny X as Viagra for the brain. Increase IQ up to 100%, increase focus up to 300%. It was $47 to $57 a bottle. The FTC got a judgment of $26 million, tells you how big the bucks are involved in these scams. And the other thing is, however, all they could collect was 600000 because all the rest of it had been spent. Ugh. Well, it just shows you the kind of things that they do to prey upon the 50-plus population. Well, and, improve and, and, your memory. And in that case, that's just, but there have been other... Uh, actions by the FTC on marketers of dietary supplements that they claimed would treat opioid, o opioid addiction, help people get off of opioids. Others that were also cognitive function that they said would improve uh, people's uh, brain power, include, in, uh, improve kids' ability to learn in school, uh, uh, thwart the uh, ravages of Alzheimer's disease. Uh, another one, um, that was supposedly uh, going to be able to treat the side effect of chemotherapy, a wasting disease that is often a side effect, plus, again, memory loss. And one of the more recent ones, in addition to this Geniox outfit, Geniox deal, was uh, a product called No Beaties uh, that purported to treat or to substitute for prescription drugs and insulin in the treatment of diabetes. So no beaties, no obviously, beaties. sort of to tell you. Okay. And, and again, these are all products that were uh, sold on mainstream stores, mainstream websites. You mentioned prescription drugs. I have read articles yeah. about um, mostly online companies selling really bogus prescription drugs. Yeah. You have no idea what you're getting, correct? That's right. And, and uh, many of these are uh, uh, originate overseas. Uh, I, I don't remember the exact statistics, but I think it was the National Board of Pharmacy did a study uh, or a review of like thousands of websites. I think there's like 10 or 11,000 websites that peddle prescription drugs online, and they found an alarmingly high percentage that were not registered as they needed to be with the licensing boards, that the products came from China or whatever. Doesn't mean it's a bad product, but there's sometimes a correlation there. And then in, uh, in many cases, they were uh, uh, tainted. And so, you know, we and, and the authorities really recommend, there are legitimate online uh, pharmacies and, and the mainstream brick and mortar pharmacies generally mm -hmm. sell online, but one of the things you can look for is, it's called the VIPS seal, uh, uh, Verified Internet Pharmacy something or other, VIPS, that, that indicates that it is a, uh, a legit outfit. But you know, again, part of the problem with, um, the people need to understand, my back on the dietary supplements, uh, as the government does not review and approve those ahead of time like they do a drug. Right, it's not uh, regulated it's in not, the same way. After the fact, if the Federal Trade Commission or the FDA finds them making bogus uh, claims, then they'll land on them, but they're not approved ahead of time. They're generally just vitamins and amino acids and enzymes and that sort of thing. Uh, some have been proven to have benefits but some haven't. They're not allowed to market them as promoting, uh, as promoting treatment for a disease. Uh, and again, in some of those, just like the prescription drugs, they've been found to have ingredients in them that are not listed on the label, in some cases that are tainted, and even uh, products that are natural, uh, depending on your health, depending on other medications you take, they may not interact properly. Before you take any dietary supplement, number one piece of advice, check with your doctor and ask them, what do you think, is it okay if I take this? How can we protect ourselves against these fakes? Because fakes come not only dietary supplements, not only prescription drugs, but just merchandise, things that you would buy, they're counterfeit. The, uh, probably the number one thing, is just kind of examine the website, and most of the counterfeits that we're talking about are sold online. Look at the website. I, I can't tell you how many beautiful uh, websites I see, beautiful pictures, not always, but beautiful pictures uh, that you can't find a physical address. 
you can't find a phone number. The only way that you can contact them, if you need to contact them, if you have a problem, if you want a refund, is you've got to go on some form online and fill in your information and hope they're going to contact you. So look for that sort of information. If prices are too good to be true, that is, uh, although sometimes the prices are, are, are comparable to what you would expect them to be, uh, certainly check the company out with the Better Business Bureau, and if we've got a bad record on them or don't have a record on them, uh, factor that in, do online reviews, uh, uh, and, and just really uh, uh, pay with a credit card. At least if you pay with a credit card, you, got some protection you have some way. recourse yeah. if later something goes wrong and you can demonstrate that in fact it was a fraudulent sale. Uh, we've been talking a lot about the digital world and, and digital related scams. Are there still the sweepstakes scams that yep. come in the mail? Sweepstakes, Nigerian letters, <laughs> all the all the They're old still in, there. The, the, the basic scams in many cases stay the same, but the crooks just update the story. They try to follow the headlines sometimes, but they'll update the story. They'll update the technology. You know the the uh, the sweepstakes scams, these Nigerian letter scams, romance scams, a uh, particular problem for uh, seniors. Uh, they tend to, in many cases, particularly women, tend to be uh, the most vulnerable to uh, uh, these uh, romance scams. Uh, and you just want to go slow, and you kind of want to look at the websites, and you kind of want to, I always advise, slow down, don't let your emotions get too far out in front of your common <laughs> sense. Well, uh, let me ask you a question based off of that romance scam, because so many of the scams these days seem to be directed at the senior population. Yeah. Why is that? I, 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 I'll tell you an interesting finding. The answer is yes, many specific sorts of scams are targeted at seniors. Uh, let me di divert for a minute and say, however, we're starting to do studies and other organizations are doing studies that are finding that young people are every bit as likely and in some cases more likely to fall for a scam. Hmm. Uh, it's just that uh, there are different scams and different stories and whatever, but back to the seniors, you know, they, they, they tend to be targeted, we tend to be targeted, in some cases by just good old knocking on the door, uh, gonna remove the branches from your roof or, you know, clean up your yard or whatever, give you a great deal, pay me in advance. Uh, and part of that is because they're home and to answer the door, part of it is because Frankly, uh, we grew up at a time when you didn't really, were more trusting. You didn't worry that somebody on the other end of the phone or somebody knocking on the door, there was a high likelihood that they were gonna try to scam you. So they're targeted for those sorts of scams. Um, some of them are based on the fact that in many cases, uh, the seniors may be on fixed income, so they're looking for a good deal on prescription drugs. Or conversely, they own homes, they've got assets. Let's try to take them in investment scams. So, what is your best advice to the seniors watching this show? The interesting thing about the study I mentioned uh, about who's the victim of scams and why, the, 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 uh, I think the title of it was a Better Business Bureau national study called The Illusion of Invulnerability, and the point was young people think they're invulnerable. Okay? They think, well, I'm not gonna get scammed, I'm too smart for that. Even though, frankly, because of all the time they spend online, and all the many scams that are perpetrated online, uh, they tend to be victimized more. At the other end, uh, it found that seniors, uh, the good news is, in many cases, have sort of said, been there, done that, no, that's a scam, <laughs> okay? And don't fall for it, but still do enough. They're targeted in certain, uh, and the other thing is the younger people, while they, in many cases, were victimized more, the amount they lost was relatively smaller. The scams targeting seniors, the romance scams, and other, the lottery scams, sweepstakes, tended to be in the thousands to tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands of dollars. So, again, we recommend slow down. Uh, if, if something seems too good to be true, that's why there's an old saying that says it probably is. Slow down. Uh, don't let your, your uh, emotions outstrip your common sense. E even if all through the process it sounds legitimate and you think I gotta do something or you think I've won something uh, and I'm gonna collect the minute they say wire me money or go buy a, an iTunes gift card or some other sort of gift card, stop. It is 100% a scam at that point. Well now finally, if you find yourself a victim of a scam, uh, 
your chances, of course, recovering money are probably minimal. But what yeah. what should you do? Well, we want to hear about it. Uh, we we actually have an online service called Scam Tracker. Uh, you can go to Better Business Bureau website and click on a button that says Scam Tracker, and really do two things. Uh, it's a it's it's real kind of neat interactive heat map that you can drill down and you can see what kinds of scams are being reported in your neighbor down to your pretty much neighborhood town pretty much neighborhood and in fact if you get some call that sort of sounds legit maybe you go on there and say well somebody else has already reported that is a scam so you can not only see what's being reported but then you can report it to us uh, fill out your own report uh, and then that allows us if we see a pattern we'll alert the media uh, certainly on uh, the FTC, uh, the FTC doesn't investigate individual cases like we may, but th if they get enough information and enough reports, then they'll take action. And of course, they've got regulatory authority that, uh, that we don't. So report to the FTC, report it to uh, the Better Business Bureau, report it depending on the nature of the thing. If it gets into the realm of a true crime, report it to the police. Well, but don't be embarrassed to report it either. That's the other thing. A lot well, of times. Well, so many people are when they're taking That's the other thing they rely on. That people are embarrassed, and 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 when they feel that somebody's embarrassed, they just keep coming back, coming back, coming back. So, it may be embarrassing, but don't be embarrassed. <laughs> report it because at least you'll be helping other folks. Well, thanks for helping us avoid getting scammed. Okay. To protect yourself against scams, go to the Scam Alert page of the Federal Trade Commission's website or visit the Scam Tracker on the website of the Memphis Better Business Bureau.